And she apologized during the interview because she has problems putting words together, getting sentences out, keeping her mind clear. And she says she's a COVID-19 long hauler. She had uh, COVID-19 and uh, she was sick for a while and then she thought she would get better. But then she found herself struggling with a bunch of symptoms, shortness of breath, heart palpitations. She mentioned that gastric issues, trouble concentrating, what would be called a brain fog. Another woman from the same Toronto Star article that Susie was featured in, she's been trying to finish a book for about a year now. She gets stuck. She can't turn the page. She hopes that one day she will wake up and finally feel better. There's not a lot of research yet on this, and hopefully there will be soon, about the COVID-19 long haulers and what this illness does to people. It's not just a lower respiratory disease. It's been called a vascular disease. It affects the brain. It affects the heart. And what help can you get? Well, Susie mentioned an organization called Pillars of Wellness. And I asked Heather to follow up on that so we can find out what Susie's been doing to make herself better. And that's why Laurie Desjardins joins us. She is co-owner and founder, also an occupational therapist at Pillars of Wellness. Lori, good morning. Good morning, Mike. How are you? Not bad at all. Yeah, Susie was so apologetic yesterday. She, I thought she sounded terrific, but every once in a while she'd struggle. You know, what are the right words? What are the right words? And you could tell how frustrated she was, Lori. Yeah, you know what? Susie's been a superstar throughout all of this, but, you know, it's not an uncommon experience for the long haulers to have, you know, issues with communication and word finding and brain fog and concentration. So she's one of many that has that ongoing symptom. Yeah. And she was also very, you know, worried that for others in her situation, there's not a lot of help out there yet. Uh, You know, medicine, they're still working on getting rid of the disease. Yeah, that's right. I mean, the medical system is working really hard to catch up with how fast the disease is progressing. And from a rehab perspective, you know, we're trying our best to keep up with the pace as well, but there's not a lot out there. So the medical system is trying to manage more of the acute illness and the rehab staff are really trying to pick up where that finishes, right? And that's mm-hmm. where there's still a gap in knowledge. We're learning as the disease progresses. Okay. Tell me about Pillars of Wellness. How long have you been around? Um, So we've been open for just over three years, um, and we're more of an integrated care center. So we've got a variety of services that people are able to access. Um, And we're trying to change kind of the way healthcare is presented to people on a rehab front. When you're in the hospital, you have access to a variety of services, you know, physiotherapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy. But when you leave the hospital setting, everything is private pay. And typically when you go to those clinics, you know, you have one service at a time. But uh, for people like COVID, It's very systemic. So it's impacting people, as you mentioned, and as Susie mentioned, on a multitude of levels. So one given service is unlikely to make a huge change in this person's rehab status. So an integrated care center, we can utilize the knowledge of a variety of expertise Mm. and really treat that person from a whole person perspective. So something like COVID is better suited in more of an integrated center where they can access a variety of services. Well, Laurie, is there one common uh, thing that they they present, these COVID long haulers? You know, I think we started treating them because we typically are a more of a neurological-based clinic, and a lot of these people are complaining about how their brain is, you know, after having COVID, talking about the brain fog, different cognitive impairments. So we actually started having them come in initially to do what the, what's called an EEG brain assessment. It's one of the most objective ways to measure cognitive function. And these people were coming in to say, hey, I need to know if there's something wrong with my brain because no one else can tell me anything and something's wrong. Something feels different. So we were doing these assessments to give them objective data that, yeah, in fact, you know what, your cognition is, has been impacted. Um, and then from there, we've been kind of integrating them into treatment to be able to help with their cognitive status and overall health. All right. Give me a nice, uh, you know, a, a simple you know, short form answer on what some of that therapy would be? Um, So for example, for Susie, um, she is doing some occupational therapy. So we have outlined more of her, you know, cognitive challenges and we're working on doing some remedial approaches for that. Um, She's working with a naturopath, focusing a little bit more on, say, an anti-inflammatory diet, some supplementations around helping with stress and sleep disorders, acupuncture as well to help kind of calm the nervous system and help with sleep and residual pain 
We're using physiotherapy to help with the cardiac status. A lot of the time, these people have issues with heart rate regulation. They're not sure how to integrate in activity again. They're scared. They've been told to go home and rest. So a lot of this is kind of retraining their body and brain, how to get back into activity, what's safe, um, and then even speech pathology. Some of these people have issues with swallowing. Um, some of them have been intubated. Some have troubles word finding and communicating. So integrating all of those together. As I mentioned to Susie yesterday, this is a, a perfect example of how you can say to some of the deniers, this is not the flu. No, no, it's definitely not the flu. The flu you see the recovery happen, you know, the, the rest and recovery works. But for long hauler COVID-19, the ongoing rest is also a problem. It's actually perpetuating the cycle. Um, and without the, the, the treatment, these people aren't getting better. Mm-hmm. Uh, Susie also mentioned that uh, she gets the sense, because I have read statistics, that there seems to be more on the female side presenting with this COVID long haul. And Susie was suggesting that some in the medical community are kind of treating it like chronic fatigue syndrome. We don't know what's wrong with you. You're just anxious. Yeah, it's true. Actually, there have been a there have been a bunch of people that have kind of gotten that diagnosis, and it may be more related to females. That I'm not entirely sure, but they do have a component of chronic fatigue with the long haulers for sure. And there is an anxiety and mental health component that comes alongside it. I don't think it's necessarily directly from COVID, but from the sequelae of having COVID and how that affects their life, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, even with someone who has chronic fatigue, they still need to have treatment and guidance and have an understanding of how to work within that. Um, So there's still a huge rehabilitative role in that sense, and it will lighten our medical system. So if these people are in with the appropriate rehab, they're going to have less visits to their family doctor, less hospital visits. So it's really a cyclical process. As I mentioned to Susie, though, it's, it goes to the historical norm of women seem to get, uh, I don't know, shooed away by the medical community at times. Oh, it's all in your head. It's all in your head. Yeah, I mean, it happens more with women. Women are more associated to have chronic illnesses, um, and women typically are the ones to seek out medical care more often. <laughs> Our male counterparts don't typically yeah. go to the doctors unless they really have to. Um, so I think they're not, I know, I don't think they're heard quite as often, um, which is a shame, especially in the long hauler situation, because there's a lot of women and there's a lot of people that don't have help. They don't have money to support the type of help that they need. And so a lot of them feel pretty lost and unheard. I mean, this is some serious stuff you were saying you deal with more of the neurological aspects, the brain fog, but I mean, tachycardia, abnormal heart rhythm is a serious issue. Yeah, and I would say pretty much everybody that we've seen um, post-COVID has had some type of cardiac issue. Um, So, you know, they'll be walking up the stairs, and by the time they get to the top of the stairs, their heart rate is really, really high. They're short of breath. You know, these are things that you would typically do every day and have no impact. Um, And that scares them, right? That that feels terrible, and you feel like you're almost going to have a heart attack. And that's just your body's response after having this illness. And it's, it's really looking at that because you do need to rehabilitate that. But a lot of people are trying to seek medical care, right? So they need to have a cardiologist. They need to do a bunch of tests to, to clear that they're safe to do any form of activity and then take that next step. But um, that's been a huge, huge issue. I'd say long, long standing, even more than the, the breathing issues on its own. Well, one poor woman in the star article, Lori, she had to give up her great Dane. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't take care of him. Can you imagine having kids and having this symptoms? Oh gosh, no! It's it's so it's so difficult because if you don't have supports around you, right? You've got to you've got to do what you got to do. But these people, when you know you can't get up in the morning without feeling like you can't breathe and you've got a headache and you're not even remembering what you need to do day to day, you know, caring for your kids would seem like a a, a mountain. And be careful what you wish for, folks. There's some people say, "I I just I, I'll just want to get this thing, get it over with. You know, take a couple of weeks off work and I'll be fine." No. Laurie, uh, what kind of results have you been seeing? Are you encouraged? I am encouraged, yeah. It's a slow and steady gain um, with these individuals, which is, which is similar to anybody who has, you know, more of a chronic or more systemic kind of overarching condition. But it is slow and steady. They are making improvements. They're learning a lot. They're implementing new strategies. So there's definitely light at the end of the tunnel for these mm-hmm. people. Um, it's just making sure that, you know, the medical system is directing them to rehab and not just saying, you know, go home and rest because that's, that's advice that can actually lead people further down the hole of a chronic condition. So 
I do encourage these people to seek out treatment and, you know, look for a centre that's got a multitude of services that can really tackle them from every which angle. Pillars of Wellness, one of them. Lori, we thank you so much for your time this morning. Stay well. Great, thanks. Take care. All right. Lori Desjardins is co-owner, founder, and an occupational therapist at Pillars of Wellness.